There is absolutely no mechanical connection between this steering wheel and the front wheels of this car. This is something basically unheard of in the production car world, steer by wire. Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be deep diving into Lexus' new steering system and we're going to focus on five major questions. How does it work? Why? No seriously, why? Is it safe? Answering all of your what ifs. Why is Lexus yoke okay, but Tesla's was a bad idea? And finally, what are the disadvantages of this system? Because I did notice some flaws. So let's start at the very beginning. When you steer a car today, there is a direct mechanical linkage which passes from the steering wheel to the steering rack. When you rotate the steering wheel, this rotates the steering shaft, which rotates a pinion, which forces the steering rack to move left to right, which pulls on tie rods, ultimately pivoting your wheels. In the vast majority of modern cars, this process is electronically assisted, with an electric motor either mounted in line with the steering column or mounted separately to the rack, providing assist so it's easy to turn the wheels, which is especially important at low speeds like parking. With steer by wire, as seen here with the Lexus RZ450e, that steering shaft does not exist. When you turn the steering wheel, a sensor sees how much you've turned the wheel, and a controller then tells a motor on the steering rack how much to turn the front wheels. This is all done electronically. Now, I can already hear the sound of a thousand keyboards typing how unsafe this is, so chill out for a second as we'll get to that. You might wonder, how does the driver feel anything? Well, in many ways it's a lot like a driving simulator, except your feedback is a response to real forces that are influencing the front wheels. The electric motor on the steering rack is called the steering control actuator, which senses the forces coming from the road surface to the tires. This information is then sent to an electric motor mounted in the steering column, called the steering torque actuator. This motor is what provides feedback to the driver, whether that's a varying force as you navigate a corner, or the vibrations from a rough road surface, or a lightened feel if the front end loses grip, like on snow or ice. It can mimic the real feedback of a traditional steering system because it can send whatever forces are felt by the steering rack right to the steering wheel. So now that we understand how it works, the big question is why? What's the point? Well, I was able to chat with one of the lead engineers responsible for the Lexus RZ450e, and his response to this question delighted me. He explained to me the logic as follows. As the automotive world transitions to electrified vehicles, response has increased, and not only with throttle, but braking as well. It's well established that electric motors are much quicker to react than combustion engines. When you press the go pedal, the torque can be instant, something that's essentially impossible for combustion engines to do. So with electrified vehicles, we have better throttle response. With regen braking, in other words using electric motors to slow the car, we also have improved response in braking, as it happens as soon as you lift your foot on the accelerator pedal a small amount instead of after you've transferred to the brake pedal. So with responsive braking and with an insanely responsive accelerator pedal, the only lacking element here is steering. Steering response is ultimately limited by the steering ratio. A high steering ratio means you have to turn the wheel a lot in order to get the car to turn. A low steering ratio means you turn the steering wheel less, corresponding to the front wheels turning a lot. So the shorter your steering ratio, the more responsive your steering is, because it takes less hand movement to rotate the front wheels. It's a simple fact that less hand movement is faster, so the response of short ratio steering systems is quicker. Well there's two big problems here. First, if you use a short steering ratio, steering is difficult and requires a lot of effort. But this can be overcome with steering assist systems. The second problem though, which can't be overcome with traditional steering systems, is that if you have a short steering ratio, at highway speeds, the car is super twitchy and it creates a stability problem for drivers. With a drive-by-wire system, the steering ratio can be whatever you want, whenever you want, under whatever conditions you want. This gives an incredible amount of design flexibility for engineers. At low speeds, you can make the steering really responsive, with a short ratio. At highway speeds, you can dull the response, using a higher ratio, allowing for better stability. And you can create a smooth transition in the steering ratio from low to high vehicle speeds. So that's the response story, but there are other advantages of steer-by-wire as well. From a packaging standpoint, the steering wheel location is much more flexible. 
it can be raised and legroom is freed up because you don't have a steering shaft going from the wheel to the steering rack. Tall folks will find this welcome. The design also allows for a steering yoke rather than a traditional wheel since the steering ratio is adjustable. This means you never have to use hand over hand motion and never have to take either hand off the wheel to maneuver, an idea that's popular in racing. This differs greatly from Tesla's design, which we'll touch on later. The yoke also frees up visibility, as it obstructs much less of your view. Again, for the tall folks, often the top of the steering wheel can block important dash information, even at the highest height adjustment. Not the case here. It also allows for cool camera shots, though I'm not suggesting we start designing interiors for the purposes of YouTubers. Finally, Steer by Wire offers a more comfortable steering experience. Enthusiasts, plug your ears, as I'm aware you prefer any and all feedback. Not everyone drives their car for fun, most don't, and most just want a pleasant experience. Steer by wire means you can choose what feedback you want the steering wheel to convey and what you don't. Lexus says lower frequency road inputs aren't necessary. For example, going over a pothole, the steering wheel would typically lurch with harsh feedback. Now it's mellowed out. But let's say you're on a wet road or snowy road. Frictional information, how much grip you have, still passes through. If the front tires lose grip in the snow, there's a drop in the force at the steering rack. This immediately translates to the steering actuator, so the driver feels the loss of tire grip. The key advantage here is engineers can choose what feedback passes through, which opens up huge possibilities for different steering modes. So we understand the why, but is it actually safe? I think there are two main what-ifs that cover most of the scenarios you're likely to be curious about. First, what if the car loses power? Second, what if a critical steering component fails? So let's start with a loss of power. You might be surprised to learn there are essentially three power sources for the system. You have the main battery, which powers the onboard 12 volt battery, and then you have an additional backup battery in case the original 12 volt battery fails. So, in the event that the vehicle's main battery were to lose power, you have two power sources that can continue to provide steering, even if as you're going down the road the vehicle appears to be off. Okay, so redundancy minimizes the concern with the loss of power, but what if the steering control actuator were to fail? If that motor doesn't work, you lose steering, right? Once again, much like in the aviation world, redundancy is the solution. While it looks like a single motor, inside the housing are two motors. In fact, all of the critical components are redundant. Sensors, controllers, yes, there are even two motors used to provide feedback for the driver, inside a single housing. In the event that a component fails, you get a warning so that you can stop the vehicle safely and get it serviced. In addition, while this technology may sound new and scary, it really isn't. We already have throttle by wire. Essentially, every modern engine uses an electronic throttle, a technology that goes back to the 1980s in production cars. We also already have brake by wire, and in fact, we already have steer by wire used for rear wheel steering in cars. So while this particular application is pretty new, the tech is well established. Speaking of tech, Tesla. They put a yoke in the Model S, and it made a lot of noise in the car world. There was a lot of disapproval, and thankfully it wasn't too long until Tesla went back to offering normal steering wheels as an option. Worth mentioning, Lexus will initially sell the RZ450e with a traditional mechanically linked steering system and later offer the yoke with steer by wire as an option. The reason why folks didn't like what Tesla did was very simple. Hand over hand turning doesn't make any sense with a yoke. Parking in sharp, low speed corners are unnecessarily complicated. There's a reason why wheels are circular. Okay, but they get away with yoke steering wheels in Formula One. So what's the deal? Well, these steering wheels have much shorter steering ratios. The Lexus yoke rotates 150 degrees in either direction until you reach a hard stop. So you have 300 degrees of total steering wheel rotation versus about 840 degrees of rotation in the Tesla or 2.33 turns lock to lock. Hand over hand makes no sense on a yoke, and Lexus eliminates the need to do it by using a very low steering ratio at low vehicle speeds. Okay, so why can't Tesla just eliminate hand over hand movement with a low steering ratio steering rack? As you reach higher vehicle speeds, like driving on the highway, a very short ratio steering rack means a super twitchy vehicle. 
the steering would feel far too sensitive to most drivers, and you'd end up with unstable maneuvers as a result, posing a safety concern. Now, modern variable steering ratio cars can try to address this, but ultimately you're mechanically limited in design, since the steering wheel is directly connected to the steering rack. Lexus design avoids this problem entirely, and enables responsive steering at low speeds while increasing the ratio at higher speeds in very small increments as you increase in vehicle speed so that it feels natural and you don't run into unstable steering at highway speeds. Formula 1 drivers get away with these super short, purely mechanical steering ratios because unlike the rest of us, they're actually good drivers, and they can handle the increased steering sensitivity. Also, props to Lexus for still including so many physical controls and stocks on the steering wheel. Turn signals, wipers, lights, cruise control, not everything needs to be a touchscreen. Finally, let's talk bad news. Overall, the system is very well thought out, but a few things stick out to me as flaws. First, response. And I have to give Lexus credit here, because they absolutely have the right approach. It's just the execution is a little off. You see, if you happen to be on the highway and wildly jerk the wheel one direction or the other, it's completely possible for a steer-by-wire system to have a controller that says, nope, your input was too aggressive, we're not going to allow it. Think of it like traction control, but instead of preventing wheel spin from acceleration, they prevent you from steering inputs that ruin your stability. Of course, stability control will do its best to help prevent you from spinning, but Lexus will absolutely allow for idiotic steering inputs. You want to flail away on the highway? Go ahead. You're in control. You get to decide whether you crash or not. Lexus isn't going to interfere. But, and it's a big but, the response actually isn't as perfect as Lexus states. Remember how they said they wanted steering response to match that of electronic throttle and braking? Well, it's worth mentioning this car does have a noticeable throttle delay, and it doesn't have true one-pedal driving. But the bigger issue, as you can tell from this video, there's actually a small delay between the steering wheel position and the front wheels. There are two ways you can verify this. First, once my hands stop rotating the steering wheel to the left, you can see the front wheels continue to rotate. Second, you can see that if I screen grab the frame from a quick rotation from left to right versus when the steering wheel is just held straight ahead, the steering wheels both have the same orientation, but the front wheel is still slightly to the left from my quick turn. This proves there is a delay between the commanded request and that request being executed. Now there's a point worth mentioning. This is a pre-production prototype. I can't tell you how it will be in production, because that car doesn't exist yet. Perhaps the response will improve, which I hope is the case. As it stands currently, a mechanical steering system has less delay from steering input to execution. And the other thing is, I'm pretty convinced folks will either really like or really dislike this kind of steering. It's super sensitive at low speeds. To be honest, I liked it. But I also like highly sensitive accelerator pedals, and brake pedals with little travel. I got used to it very quickly, but in the hands of a different driver, it could feel very twitchy. As an analogy, if you're the kind of person who cranks your mouse or video game controller sensitivity all the way up, you'll probably like it. If you're messing around on the other end, it's probably not for you. There's one more brain stretch you'll encounter as well. A completely variable steering ratio means the same steering wheel angle doesn't always correlate to the same wheel rotation. There's a curve, with sensitive steering at low speeds and more dulled steering at high speeds. Again, I found it easy and intuitive, but I also love things like one-pedal driving, where regen varies depending on vehicle speed, battery temperature, and battery state of charge. A lot of people don't want all of this complexity. They want everything to feel the same always, and here it simply doesn't. To sum this all up, I think the technology is cool. I like that it exists as an option, and I don't see any reason to doubt its reliability from an engineering standpoint. From a driving standpoint, I really think it's going to come down to the individual on whether or not you like it. How do you feel? Questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.